Section 2.5 gets at some vocabulary that's going to be really important to us in this course, and especially for those of you that go on to a calculus course. We're going to use this vocabulary a lot. So today's lesson isn't so much mathy as much as it is learning the important vocabulary to read and describe the behavior of a graph. So first we'll start with the vocabulary, and then we'll do the examples, two examples, using the vocabulary after this. So vocabulary. First thing you need to know is the difference between domain and range of a graph. The domain is all the possible input values into a function. Generally, these are the x's. And the range is all the possible output values. Generally, we use the letter y to represent this. So for example, If I've got a graph that starts here at negative 1, 2, and ends here at 1, negative 1, maybe it wiggles around like this. And I wanted to describe the domain. The domain is all the possible x values. And so what I could do is I could project this or squeeze this graph down onto the x-axis or up, depending on the direction, onto the x-axis. And you see it covers everything from negative 1 to 1. That's my domain. If we were to squish it onto the x-axis, we would cover everything from negative 1 to 1. The range, similar idea, we're just going to go onto the y-axis. And if I stretch this guy onto the y-axis, whether it's from the left or the right, You'll see I go all the way up to 2 and all the way down to negative 1. So we say the range is negative 1 to 2. Domain is the x's or the input values. Range is the outputs or the y values. So that's the first vocabulary thing we need to know, domain and range. The second is we need to know the difference between when the graph is positive and when the graph is negative. Positive is when the output value, or the y value, is greater than 0. Not equal to. It should just be greater than 0. Or visually, when we are above the x-axis. Negative, then, is just the opposite, when the output or y value is less than 0, or when we are below the x-axis. So just a really quick example here. Let's say I have a graph that goes from here at negative 1, 2. It's going to come down go through 0, 0, and back up. And actually, let's just make it go on forever. We would say the graph is positive wherever the graph is above the x-axis. So all the way to the left is negative infinity down to 0. So negative infinity down to 0. And then we will do a union. It goes back positive above the x-axis again at 2 all the way to infinity. Negative, then, is when the graph is below the x-axis, or this middle stuff. We always describe things by the x-axis. The x-coordinates are its location. So in terms of x, we're below the x-axis between the x values of 0 and 2. So we're negative from 0 to 2. That's the second. So first we had domain and range. Next we had positive and negative. The next one, don't confuse it with positive and negative, is when the graph is increasing 
or decreasing. And just like it sounds, increasing would be when the graph is going up from left to right. Decreasing, the graph looks like it's going down from left to right. So if I were to make a graph here, Similar to graph to uh, what we saw before. Let's have the graph go down. And bend up like this. Putting arrows on the end, decreasing, reading it left to right, we're going downhill, 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 downhill until it levels out. So the left part is all decreasing, and we always talk about x values, so we go from negative infinity up to an x value of 0 here. So we're going to say that's decreasing, because the graph started going down, from negative infinity to 0. Then you notice the graph goes up, 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 and keeps going up. We say then the graph is increasing on that range from 0 all the way up to an x value of infinity in this case. Notice it doesn't matter if we're above or below the axis. That would be positive and negative. Increasing and decreasing depends on if the graph is going downhill or uphill when we read it from left to right. The last thing we want to know after domain and range, positive and negative, increasing and decreasing. The last thing we want to know are about asymptotes. First, we're going to talk about things called vertical asymptotes. And that is a line, a vertical line, the graph approaches, but never crosses. Let me show you an example of this on a graph. We normally represent these asymptotes with oops. We normally represent these asymptotes with dotted lines. So you might see a dotted line here vertically and a dotted line here vertically. Those aren't part of the graph, but instead those are lines the graph is going to grow close to but never actually touch. So this graph comes along and it's going to go up really sharp, but it's never going to actually touch. It's going to get closer and closer but never touch. And then on the other side you might see the graph start close, get away from it, and then go back towards being close again. It might go up, it might go down. And then here's another part of the graph. Notice those vertical lines the graph never touches. Gets close to, but never touches and never crosses it. And vertical asymptotes are always x equals. We've got a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 2, and a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. The graph gets closer and closer, but never crosses. Be careful not to confuse that with what we call our limits at infinity, also known as horizontal asymptotes. And this describes what is happening at the edge, what the graph is approaching. So for example, let me draw another graph here. Let's 
Let's do this graph. We're going to put a vertical asymptote in this graph right here at 2. But that's not what we're talking about. That was number 4. Also going to put a vertical asymptote here at 1. But then I'm going to put a dotted line that goes horizontal at 2. That horizontal line is going to be my asymptote or the limit at infinity. So the graph might bend down that way might bounce up and wiggle around like this and then it's gonna come maybe up this way and what I notice is the limits at infinity on the edge the graph is approaching y equals 2 it's gonna always get closer and closer but never get there it is interesting to note that the graph did cross the horizontal asymptote in the middle. Horizontal asymptotes are only describing what happens at the extremes, at the edges, not in the middle. So sometimes in the middle it will cross a horizontal asymptote, but it will never cross a vertical asymptote. So this is the vocabulary I want you to be familiar with, domain and range positive and negative, increasing and decreasing, and vertical and horizontal asymptotes. To practice with this vocabulary, we're going to do a couple examples where I'm just going to ask you details about the graph. So first we need a graph, and I'm going to do my best to draw it and describe it as I draw it. So we've got a y-axis that goes up to 1 and down to 5. We're going to go left to 3 and right to 5. Then I'm going to draw in a vertical asymptote at negative 2 and a horizontal asymptote at negative 3. I'm going to put a point at negative 3. 0, put a point at negative 1, 0, a point at 0, negative 2, a point at 2, negative 4, and a point at 4, negative 1. And the way we're going to draw this graph is it's going to come in by the vertical as or the horizontal asymptote bend up and go towards the horizontal vertical asymptote getting my vertical and horizontal backwards then come back down the other side to go through these points and after it hits the top point it's going to come down to the horizontal asymptote so this is example one we're going to call this the function p of x so A, first thing I'm going to ask is, what is the domain? Notice the domain is going to be if we were to bring the x-axis up, squeeze everything down onto x. When we do that, what you might notice is the only thing missing, the only thing that's not part of the graph is when we, whoops, when we delete the graph, that'll do it. Can't get rid of that little yellow piece. There it goes. The only thing missing will be that vertical asymptote at negative 2, because the graph never equals negative 2. So we'll say from negative infinity to negative 2, then we have a union, we have to jump over the gap at negative 2, and then we will go from negative 2 to infinity. The range. Range is the y value. If we were to squeeze this graph onto the y-axis, what we see is the y-axis is covered even down here. What y values are covered in there? 
But what I see is it's going down to a lower point. The y ends here at, I think I lost an x line. What is that? Negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 seems to be the bottom of the graph. But at the top of the graph near the asymptote, it does seem to go up forever. So we will say the bottom of the graph is negative 4 on the y, but then it goes up forever to infinity around that asymptote. See, where is this graph positive? It's positive where it's above the x-axis. Notice it turns positive here at negative 3 and stays positive up until the asymptote. Now, this is a special thing to note. At the asymptote, the graph is nothing, so it's not positive or negative. So that happens at negative 2. And then we're still positive coming down until we hit the point 1. So from negative 3 to negative 2, union, we have to jump over the asymptote from negative 2 to negative 1. So as you might imagine, negative would be everywhere else. It's down below the x-axis and negative on the left. It's negative on the right and never quite crosses the axis again. So from negative infinity to negative 3, union, we drop negative again after 1, and then off to positive infinity. Increasing. Increasing. Where is the graph going up from left to right? Well, I do notice it is increasing initially right up to the asymptote. So from negative infinity up to the asymptote at negative 2, it's increasing. And actually, it's got a second time that it increases here in the middle of the graph. And that is from 2 to 4. So we'll say union from 2 to 4. It is also increasing there. So if I ask you when it's decreasing, decreasing must be the rest of it. From that asymptote, it's clearly going down, 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 down. So from negative 2 to 2, we always say the x-coordinate describing its location. Union, it starts going down again from 4 on forever. So 4 on to infinity. We could even ask to describe the graph in terms of maximum and minimum points. If we say x is greater than or equal to 2, what is the maximum value that we hit? This is actually asking what is the maximum. That's asking for the y-coordinate. We want to know what the maximum actually is. So right of 2, you see we go up and we peak here. We peak at that value of negative 1. So we're going to say the maximum is negative 1, if we're greater than 2. And similarly, we could restrict it and say, if we let x be greater than 1, what's the minimum? In other words, where is the valley that we hit? The valley that we hit greater than 1 is down here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So the minimum value for the graph in that range is negative 4. How about this? What's p of 0? p of 0. 0 is talking about the x-coordinate there, the input. We're looking for the output. So when x is 0, y is negative 2. This is a very different question than asking when p of x equals 0, x is equal to. 
because now we're being told the output. We're being told the solution is 0. What are the x values that give you an output of 0? Well, there's one here at negative 1 and one here at negative 3. So x is negative 1 and negative 3. How about this? Let's see if I can scroll without losing too much of the graph so that we can still solve problems. K when P of X equals 3, what does X equal? Actually, we'll make it negative 3. When P of X is negative 3, what I want to notice about negative 3 as I'm marking up this graph significantly, negative 3 is the asymptote. But because it's a horizontal asymptote, we are allowed to actually hit the asymptote. So we hit it once at 1 and once at 3. So x is equal to positive 1 and positive 3. I have two more I'm going to try and squeeze on here. When we write x arrow negative 2, what that means is we want to know what the graph is doing as it gets close to negative 2. Not actually on negative 2, but when it gets close to it. What's the behavior doing? What's it trending towards? When x is getting close to negative 2, P of X is getting close to what? Well, if we notice close to negative 2, that's the asymptote. The graph is going up, 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 up. It's going up to essentially infinity. And that's indeed what we're going to say here. P of X is going to positive infinity. Sometimes it'll go to positive infinity at an asymptote. Sometimes it'll go to negative infinity at an asymptote. Sometimes it goes both directions, and so we'll have to specify on the right side or the left side. And we'll look at that in our next example. I'm going to put M over to the left here. Should go under L, but I want to have enough room. Also interested, as X goes to infinity, where does P of X go to? In other words, as we go off the right side with a positive infinity of x, what's the graph getting close to? Well, the graph is getting close to that horizontal asymptote. That horizontal asymptote is at negative 3. So we bloodied all over this example with tons of color. But what I want to notice we saw and were able to evaluate is we found domain and range. We found where the graph was positive and negative. We found where the graph was increasing and decreasing. We found minimums. We found maximums. We found points on the graph, both solutions and inputs. We also looked at the asymptotes, and as the graph got close to the asymptote, what was the behavior doing near the asymptote? Because we'll never actually be equal to an asymptote, but what was it doing near? Let's do one more example, and then your assignment's full of examples. But one more example where we really work with this vocabulary. So we're going to go 4 to the left. We're going to go 3 up. Actually, let's go 5 up. And we'll go 5 down. And we'll go 6 to the right. Maybe 7. I'm going to put a point at negative 1, 0. A point at 0, negative 1. A point at 2, 0. 
and a point at 4, negative 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some asymptotes. We're going to put a vertical asymptote at 3. We're going to put a horizontal asymptote at 3. And a horizontal asymptote at negative 3. All right. Now let's see about going through and filling in the graph. I want the graph to start close to that top horizontal asymptote. And it's going to come in, bend down, and it's going to go up as it gets close to that vertical asymptote. Then we're going to come in from the bottom, close to the vertical asymptote, hit our point, and then level out next to the asymptote. And we're going to try and find all the similar information about the graph. First, we're going to start with finding the domain again. Again, domain is all possible x values. And what you should start to notice is the graph hits all of these x values until it gets to the asymptote. Then after the asymptote, the graph seems to hit all of the x values. The only thing this graph seems to miss are the asymptotes, that vertical asymptotes. So x goes from negative infinity up to 3, where that asymptote is. And then union starting again from 3 up to infinity, basically jumping over the point 3. Range, then. Range is the y values. And so if we look at how the graph touches the y values, notice we do go through the asymptote. Coming down here. Then again down here, and it goes all the way down. What I want to notice is there's actually a gap in the range between the lowest point on the left and the highest point on the right. We need to reflect that when we describe the range. So the range starting from the bottom goes from negative infinity up to that high point on the right at negative 2. And then union, we have to jump that gap. The range, the y values start again at negative 1 and go up to infinity. Next, I want to know where is the graph positive. Remember, positive means above the x-axis. And we describe it in terms of what x values are above the x-axis. Well, notice this graph starts out above the x-axis. Then it's below for a while. And then it's above for a really brief moment in time. So to describe where the graph is positive, it's positive from negative infinity off the left till negative 1. Union, it pops positive again from 2 to 3. And then it's not positive anymore. Negative, then, is when the graph is below the x-axis. And we describe it again in terms of the x's. So we've got this little lump that's below the x-axis. And then the entire right part is also below the x-axis. And so we're going to describe those ranges in terms of the x value. So we drop below the x-axis at negative 1. And we stay below all the way up till 2. And then union. After that asymptote from 3 to infinity, we are always negative. We're also interested in when the graph is increasing. Let 
Remember, increasing means going up left to right. Where does the graph begin going up? Right from zero. You see from zero we start going in an upwards direction all the way up. And then again after the asymptote, moving upwards again until we reach that maximum. Remember with asymptotes, it's neither increasing or decreasing. It's undefined, so we can't count the asymptotes. We have to do the left part from 0 to 3. Union, jumping over the asymptote from 3 till 4, describing the x-coordinates again. The graph is increasing, going up. Decreasing, then, when the graph's going the other way from the beginning. You notice it's going down, 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 down. And then from that maximum point, down, down, down. So from negative infinity to zero, when it turns the corner. Union, again from that four on to infinity, the graph is always going down. Not very fast as it gets close to that asymptote, but it's definitely always going down down. You know what, I never named this function. Our previous function was uh, q, or was p, right? p of x? So we'll call this function q of x. It's the next letter in the alphabet, that sounds nice. So we're going to find q of 0 this time. q of 0 is getting at finding when our input value, our x value, is 0. Notice x is 0 right here in the center of the graph. That's equal to negative 1. Again, that's different than asking when q of x equals 0, the solution is 0, what does x equal? So now the solution, the y, the output is 0. That's these points over here on the left and the right. Our y values are negative 1 and 2. I'm sorry, the x values are negative 1 and 2. When x is negative 1 and 2, the solution is 0, the output. The y is 0. We could find a local minimum. The minimum when x is greater, I'm sorry, less than 2. When we go less than 2, that's the left half of the graph. The minimum is this point over here, where the valley is. Again, we're asking for the minimum, not the location. We already know the location. The minimum value is equal to that y value of negative 1. We can also ask for a local maximum when x is greater than 3. That's on the right side of the asymptote, and that's where the mountain peaks, the maximum there. The y value at that point, you see, is negative 2. In min and max, they're asking for what that value is, not where it is. OK. Let's look at this. As x gets close to 3, what does q of x approach or get close to? Notice on the one hand, on the left, it's going off to positive infinity. It's going up. On the right side of 3, it's down here at negative infinity. And so the way we're going to compensate for this difference is we're going to split this up. And we say when x goes to 3 from the positive side, over here to the right is the positives, over to the left is the negatives. As x goes to 3 from the positive side, q of x, the function, 
from the positive side is going down to negative infinity. Versus if x goes to 3 from the negative side, from the negatives, it's going up to positive infinity. Q of x is approaching positive infinity. I'm going to put L off to the left just because I'm running out of space. L wants to know as x goes to plus or minus infinity, what does Q of x approach? I'm going to clean up some of this mess. It's getting crowded. All this extra colors going on and arrows. So if you want to review anything, check out the rewind button. There, now we can start to see the graph again. Okay, as x goes to positive and negative infinity, Again, I want to notice at positive infinity, the graph is down here. The graph is at negative 3. At negative infinity, over on the left, we're up here at positive 3. So again, we're going two different places. So we're going to need to express the two different answers. As x goes to positive infinity, Q of x is going to go to negative 3. But as x goes to negative infinity, Q of x is going to go to positive 3. We're describing the end behavior, the edges of the graph. So that's really today's lesson. Not really very mathy. It's very much a vocabulary lesson. But it's vocabulary that's going to be very important as we work with graphs throughout this course. And very, very important when you get to calculus. Because when a certain graph is increasing or decreasing, it means something about its positive or negativeness. It has to do with this thing called a derivative. You need to know this vocabulary, know how to describe it, and know what it means as we work with these graphs. Lots of new vocabulary. It's very clunky when you start working with it. Practice, 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 practice is the way you get this vocabulary and really understand what it's talking about. So take a look at the homework. Come to class with questions. And we will see you then.